In this discussion, we will discuss the discussion question of Describe quarterly payroll tax reporting. So quarterly payroll tax reporting. We are required generally, oftentimes, most of the time, to report payroll taxes quarterly using the quarterly payroll tax form. That form is Form 941. So that would be the first thing we'd probably want to list out if we're talking about the quarterly payroll tax reporting. Make sure we don't get the 941 mixed up with the Form 940, which is very easy to do given the fact that they sound so similar. It's also easy to do because you would think that the 940 being the number before 941 would be done, you know, a form that you would fill out <laughs> before you'd fill out the 941. You would think you'd fill out the 940 and then the 941 at the end of the year, but it's reversed. What's happening is we fill out the forms 941 quarterly and then the 940 uh, yearly at the end of the year. They're not even related in that they're not exactly the same data either, but we'll get more into that in a second. So then the quarterly forms then are the 941s and we have to report them each quarter. Uh, so that means that if we take 12 months in the year and we divide it by a quarter or multiply it times a quarter or divide it by four, we get three months. So we got to make this uh, report happen every three months. That means uh, January, February, March, first quarter, uh, April, May, June, July, August, September, October, November, December. Those are going to be the four quarters that'll be indicated in the upper left, upper right of the actual 941 form. So we'll have to check off and make sure that we check off the correct quarter. If we do not, then we're going to apply this to the wrong quarter and we'll confuse the IRS and that you, that'll cause problems. So we want to make sure that we get uh, that. Otherwise, the forms will look pretty much the same for the entire year. We could find the forms on the IRS website at irs.gov. There are the three main taxes that will be reported on a quarterly basis. Those include federal income tax, Medicare, and Social Security. So those are going to be the three things that uh, we're reporting on the quarterly forms. Now, the quarterly forms are similar to like the 1040 that we do at the end of the year for our individual tax reporting. Uh, so the 1040 we do on a yearly basis and we basically calculate how much we owe and then we've already made the payments. So typically we say, hey, this is how much we already paid. And usually we paid a little bit more than we owe and therefore we get a little bit back. That's what we're gonna do here, except the, the IRS says, hey, these, these forms are a little bit more important because they deal with everybody's payroll and uh, this is my scenario, by the way, on what the IRS thinks, which is may or may not be accurate. If you're trying to find reason within the IRS, it's a, it may not be the best place to, to look, but this would be my rationale for it. They're saying that um, because you're dealing with other people's payroll, meaning you're kind of withholding other people's money and then uh, have being obligated to pay, a, pay it out, we want more reporting than the 1040, which would be just reporting on individuals. Uh, money, not the reporting of, of a bunch of others individuals' monies that have been with, withheld. Therefore, we want to report it uh, quarterly rather than yearly. But the essence of the report on a quarterly basis is much the same. We're going to say, hey, here's recalculation of what we owe to the, to the extent that we can on the quarter. And then we're going to say, here's how much we paid. And it should be, unlike the 1040, pretty much exact for the quarters. Each quarter should be able to report, hey, this is how much we owe. We already paid it. Why can it be exact and it's not exact on the 1040 that we do at the end of the year? Because the, the 1040, that federal income tax calculation that we have at the end of the year is way too complex for us to ever estimate correctly. Uh, it's just not going to happen. So we try to basically overestimate it usually and get a small refund to avoid penalties and interest. But on the, on the uh, quarterly forms, we can estimate at least Social Security and Medicare exactly and therefore should have already paid the exact payment. Now, you might be saying, well, hey, there's a federal income tax on the 941 as well. Um, but note that we're not really estimating the federal income tax liability to the employees on the Form 941. We're basically just telling the IRS how much we withheld. That's all we can tell them which that it is what it is. That's how much we withheld. We don't really know what the liability is because it's not, we don't know what it is until the 940 is going to be filled out. So if we go through those components, then 
Uh, once again, we got we got FIT, we've got Social Security and Medicare that will be report, reported quarterly on the Form 941. Federal income tax is going to is going to be the FIT, and that's going to be the wages that we withheld from uh, the employees. So we will report the federal income tax wages, which may differ than to from total wages by things that will typically be reduced, uh, say like above the line, they would be reduced for income like uh, lower in AGI, adjusted gross income, if you're thinking about a 1040, things like the 401k plan or a, uh, a cafeteria plan. And then we're going to list out the amount that we withheld. And you would think it would be nice if those two things were, were related. It would be nice if we can look at the wages and like multiply it times the rate or something and know how much was withheld and verify that it's correct. But we can't because once again, the federal income tax is too complicated to do that. So all we can do is say, hey, this is the wage base that we used and here's how much we withheld from it. We can't tell you any direct relationship between the two because it differs from employee to employee based on whether they're married, what their number of exemptions are, and what they filled out basically on the W-4. Then we go to the uh, the Social Security, which will include the Social Security wages, which could differ from FIT wages and total earnings for the employee based on if there's a cafeteria plan and if they hit the cap. So higher earners could result in lower Social Security wages because they would have hit the cap. Then we're going to multiply the Social Security wages times a rate to get the amount of liability for Social Security. It's important to note that the 941 reports both employer and employee portion. So we're not trying to break out the employer employee portion here. We're saying, hey, this is how much we owe total based on the liability, both what we withheld from the employee's paycheck and that which we hold or owe from the employer side of things. Then we've got the Medicare where we will have the Medicare wages, which could differ from total wages if there's something like a cafeteria plan. However, there's no cap. So uh, this might be the highest wage amount on the 940, higher than the FIT wages and the Social Security wages. We will multiply that times a rate once again to get the Medicare liability. Uh, note that that will include both employee and employer portion of the liability. Then we'll add the three types of uh, taxes up, the liabilities up, which will be the FIT, uh, federal income tax, uh, Social Security and Medicare, we'll add them up. That'll then be the total liability that we uh, would owe. Then we'll have the, the amount of uh, payments that we already made, because remember, this is just a reporting document. So we'll, we'll then tell the, if we're telling the story about this form, we would say, hey, here's our recalculation of the liability. And right underneath it, we're going to say, and here's how much we deposited for it. And they should match because they should line up exactly because it's just we already it's a flat tax and we're just telling them what we withheld for the FIT taxes. So then hopefully we don't have anything we owe and we just an information return. We don't have to write a check or anything if it was done properly and that's it. If it wasn't done properly, then we might owe money. And we'll have to write a check. Um, then on page two and or a separate form, we often have to tell a little bit more detail about the deposit that was made uh, in terms of the actual payments. So then we may have to list out the actual payments, in other words. And that's basically telling the IRS, hey, this is when we made the payments. You should have a check or some type of electronic transfer close to these dates for these amounts. And they can check them on their side, given that. And if there's a problem, then we can check our side, see if they cleared the bank. And that's how we would basically go, go through and reconcile and see whether or not they have been paid. So that will be, of course, done, this process, done four times a year. We get to do that lovely process four times a year. And then um, the quarterlies, then if we add them up, we can use to kind of reconcile to the yearly forms, not the 940 necessarily, but the form W-2s and W-3s will tie out in significant ways to the 941s. The form 940, the yearly form, seems like it would be the same. You, you would think you would take the quarterly forms and add them up to the yearly form, but that's not really what's happening. The 940 is, is in a totally separate tax, which is the FUTA tax. So because it's smaller, 
That's my interpretation or reason or guess as to why, because it's smaller. It only needs to be reported yearly. So they kind of took pity on us, said we'll only make you report this yearly rather than on a quarterly basis. End simulation! End the simulation!